Prosecutorial duty should not be the sole judges of when to utilize constitutionally sensitive means in pursuing their tasks. The illegal bugging apparently was one of aim of a team which broke into the Democratic National Headquarters in Washington during the weekend, and the political backgrounds of the men charged in the case have kicked up a storm. Mary Serafin has the story. The Watergate Apartment Hotel office complex in Washington has a fortress-like appearance and is noted for its security. But the burglars penetrated that security to break into the sixth floor offices of the Democratic National Committee. They entered through a firewell door. Police have hauled the whole door away as evidence. It's known that the intruders entered the first office. Material from files there was found in their possession. Democratic spokesmen called the file information very mundane. After the break-in was detected, five men were discovered crouched around this receptionist's desk and were arrested at gunpoint. Here and in the men's rooms in the adjoining hotel, police confiscated extensive photographic and electronic eavesdropping gear, as well as several thousand dollars in consecutively numbered bills. Of those arrested, most interest has centered on James McCord of Rockville, Maryland. McCord was once an FBI agent, then worked for 20 years as a security officer for the Central Intelligence Agency. At the time of his arrest, McCord was working as a security consultant for the Republican National Committee and the committee to re-elect President Nixon. Democrats and Republicans have been quick to react. About, uh, currently, about five men. Uh, one of them, clearly, uh, under contract and employed by both the Republican National Committee and the campaign to re-elect the president. The other four, uh, we are not, we do not have them as clearly defined at this point. Uh, how many more are there, and how many other activities have they been engaged in, and what do they contemplate by way of activity of this nature? Uh, this, I thought, this administration was a law and order administration, and I have never seen such a crass violation of individual rights as uh, we have seen in this instance. I think this is a despicable act. There's nothing the Democrat National Committee has that I want. Uh, they have a lot of unpaid bills, but uh, we don't need to photograph those. And I really can't understand why anyone would do this. I just can't comprehend. In fact, when I read the story, I thought uh, uh, to myself, uh, it's rather fruitless. I don't, even if they succeeded, uh, I could see no point in it. The Democrats are ready for their convention. Uh, they're going to be gone in July in Miami. I just couldn't put together any reason for anyone wanting to do this. Democratic presidential candidates today joined in the denunciation of the break-in at their party's headquarters. I would trust that the Department of Justice will prosecute those who have been guilty of this, uh, of this incredible act of, uh, of political surveillance and uh, political, uh, of intrusion into a political campaign headquarters. But the very thought of this sort of thing happening, I think, uh, poisons and contaminates the whole political process. And the, the president and his cabinet and his administration owe this country an explanation, first of all, and secondly, an apology. I, I gather that uh, this is symptomatic of the tendency of this administration uh, to use this kind of surveillance and invasion of privacy, uh, not only in, uh, in the political sphere, but elsewhere. And I think it's the kind of danger uh, to privacy that all citizens ought to be concerned about. Uh, this is something more than, than the invasion of the headquarters of the opposition party. It's uh, a symptom of a tendency that ought to be strongly and vigorously resisted uh, by the American people as a whole. I must say that it's the uh, legacy of years of wiretapping and snooping and violation of privacy in which the government itself has been too deeply involved. I, uh, I think Mr. Mitchell, as Attorney General, and some of his subordinates have encouraged too free a use of wiretaps and invasions of this kind, uh, supposedly in the name of security. But it, this trend, if not stopped, actually moves us in the direction of a kind of a quasi-fascism in which nothing is any longer sacred. Democratic Party officials are considering some kind of legal action based on a claim of violation of constitutional rights. Defense lawyers for the men arrested are planning legal actions seeking to reduce the bail imposed on their clients. Bail bondsmen have reportedly been reluctant to put up any money, and the five men are still in jail. Barry Serafin, CBS News, at the Watergate Complex, Washington. Charged with McCord in the case are four men, <coughs> excuse me, 
closely connected to the Cuban exile community in Miami. <coughs> <coughs> well, those frogs occur occasionally. <coughs> a federal judge in Washington today may have solved a major problem for the Democrats, what to do about all those challenges to convention delegations for allegedly violating party reforms. The judge called it unconstitutional to try to impose a quota system of age, sex, race, and so forth on elected delegations. Morton Dean will have the details later in the broadcast. If man continues to let pollution go unchecked, all of us, even creatures in the most faraway forests, will one day feel its effects. So for all living things on this earth, Texaco would like to announce our plans concerning the environment. If you'd all gather around, we'd like to talk with you. At Texaco, we've created a new department for environmental protection. It's made up of Texaco people who are dedicated to finding ways to protect the earth, the air, and the water. This department will guide the company's continuing efforts to help protect the environment, while Texaco provides the petroleum energy people need. We're all aware of the problems of pollution. We hope teaming up all our experience will help us find practical solutions. We're working to keep your trust. In several states over the weekend, Senator George McGovern won enough Democratic convention delegates to put him more than two-thirds of the way toward the presidential nomination.